First quarter, yeah, it wasn't exactly a work of art for Oklahoma. But the Sooners pulled it together from the second quarter onward, dominant against a team that, according to its conference coaches, the MAC, um, is supposed to finish second in the East Division of the MAC. That's the Akron Zips. OU 41, Akron 3. Sooners, of course, a few days away from the big game coming up, their first major test, Tennessee. Of course, that will be in Knoxville on September 12th. If you had a chance to watch this game, you know, OU from an offensive standpoint, um, you know, if, if they could have played worse, I couldn't have imagined them playing worse as far as playing on the football. You could tell that they were young up front. As a matter of fact, um, you know, yesterday on game day, um, it was announced just hours before kickoff that they'd be going with a true freshman OU would at the right tackle position. Uh, Drew Semenem would play in place of Josiah St. John. Now, St. John uh, would come into the game as second series and would play um, a lot during this game. Both guys would. But, um, you know, Drew Semia, it looks like um, you know, he's really come along during practice, and despite the fact that he's just a true freshman, you know, uh, offensive coordinator uh, Riley was not going to be hesitant at all in starting him, okay? He was going to um, put him right into the fire, and you could tell that, this offensive line, that uh, three-fifths of it, as far as the down linemen, had never started a game before. Because, you know, maybe it was the fact that Akron's uh, defensive front was better than what we thought. And they're a veteran defensive group. And the linebackers aren't that bad either. But the Sooners could not get that ground game going. And that, in combination with constant flags, I mean, the Sooners um, ended up with nine penalties in the game. And, by the way, the majority of those penalties um, occurred in the first, you know, 25 minutes of the game. Yeah, the Sooners really were, were going nowhere. In fact, the busiest Sooner in that opening quarter was the punter slash kicker slash place kicker, Austin Seibert, who punted four times in quarter number one. It was ridiculous. And, you know, Seibert, to his credit, we'll talk about him later, special teams, um, had a very solid debut for the freshman, um, you know, in all those facets. And he averaged about 50 yards per punt in the game. But he was used way too much in the punting scheme of things in that first half, especially the uh, first quarter. Mayfield, Baker Mayfield, making his debut as a senior quarterback. Uh, you can tell that nerves really played a role in the, how he will start this game because he had more incompletions than completions in quarter number one, four of nine. But I thought once OU got into a groove, once, you know, Akron started showing a little bit of signs of wear, because even though they got a good front seven to Zips too, um, they just don't have the overall depth of Oklahoma. And, you know, Coach Bowden for uh, Akron at the end of the game um, admitted that, you know, they were not used to playing in this kind of heat. Um, and it was, I think, low 90s come kickoff, and, you know, the Zips are not accustomed to that. So, you know, that had to wear on Akron uh, getting in toward the uh, latter part of the second quarter, which is where the Sooners started to finally take over the game. But offensively, yeah, it was a wreck in that first period for the Sooners, and um, you might be saying, well, maybe, you know, Lincoln Riley's offense was holding a little bit back of the playbook. They, they didn't want to show too much because Tennessee's coming up. Well, that might be true, but run blocking is run blocking, and the Sooners did not do a good job of that at all in, in the first half. In fact, at the end of the first quarter, the Sooners had zero net rushing yards, and Zamaj P. Ryan, one of the leading rushers from last season, at the end of the first quarter, I mean, he had minus five yards. That's right, he had five fewer yards rushing than a dead man. It was not that pretty to watch. And again, you, know, you give credit to Akron's uh, front seven, but uh, that time, at times they were only lining up six in the box. So run blocking is something the Sooners must be able to work on, and they can't get off to bad starts like the one they had. I mean, we'll talk about the defense in a second, but the good thing that the defense, you know, held up during the bargain, you know, by and large throughout the game, because, you know, the Sooners led 3 nothing at the end of the first quarter, but it certainly didn't feel like it. It really didn't because the offense... Uh, the run game just wasn't getting the job done. And they better be able to get the job done against Tennessee because if you have that bad of first quarter in Knoxville, you're going to be behind and you may not be able to uh, come back because Tennessee is, is far better. And we'll talk about the volunteers later on too. So while the offense, while it took them a while to get going, the defense I thought couldn't have played any better, okay, especially uh, that defensive line. And we'll talk about you know, Eric Stryker, boy, I tell you, he looks like he's in midseason form, doesn't he? He, he was spectacular. Uh, Charles Tapper putting pressure on. And, of course, you know, the two mats. 
uh, both of those guys, Romar and Diamond, uh, very effective from the tackle position. But don't forget about Jordan Wade and Charles Walker. Uh, both of those guys, when they had an opportunity to play in the rotation, they were getting into the Akron backfield as well. Akron said that they were going to be one of these teams this year that was not necessarily going to be pass predominant. And believe me, you know, that they weren't in this game. Because um, last year they threw no matter what. And, and on uh, Saturday night in Norman, that was just the opposite. They wanted to make running their overall priority. But you could tell that Oklahoma was faster, more athletic, stronger. Um, Akron, their offense just looked really plain vanilla. Quarterback play for them was terrible. I mean, the, the Zips, I think, completed um, maybe six passes the, the entire night. Uh, far more incompletions than completions. It was not a good night at all. Uh, for the Akron offense, but give credit to Oklahoma for that. And I thought, to me, the defensive MVP, the guy that wears jersey number one, okay, Dominic Alexander. You can tell that that he has definitely gone from being real good to being real, real, real good. I think he's going to be in for a fantastic season. Overall, defensive pursuit on his part on Saturday was amazing. He had, I think, seven tackles in the first quarter, one for a loss. So he was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, the wrist, from all accounts, looks fine. That's what um, held him out part of last season was the uh, bad wrist. But he looked real good. What a debut for that defense, especially for Dominic um, Alexander. Offense, you know, second quarter, we finally saw Mayfield, you know, calm down. And we saw the, the receivers really do their part. You know, D.D. Westbrook with an incredible fingertip grab catch for a touchdown. You know, Jar Jarvis Baxter, the other Juco transfer, he did real good, too. Um, you're talking about uh, Deron Neal, four catches for 65 yards. You know, Sterling Shepard, um, you know, stat-wise, wasn't a great night for him. But then again, you got to remember, Mayfield completed at least one pass to 10 different players. So, you know, this is going to be a uh, the spread formation when they definitely, when they go hurry up, uh, they're going to get as many players involved as possible. And that's what you want if you're a Sooner fan. You don't want them just focusing on one or two guys. And we saw you know, uh, Shepard with three catches, 68 yards. And two, uh, saw him um, on special teams with a couple of effective punt returns. And then in the third quarter, it was all she wrote. Three touchdowns in the third quarter for Oklahoma, including the opening play from scrimmage to start the second half. Uh, the fantastic play that the Sooners ran in which Mayfield throws across the field, finds a wide open Joe Mixon. And Mixon, you know, making his debut, you know, he actually was the number one receiver. Even though he plays running back, you know, just three catches. But... Well over 100 yards, including that long touchdown catch in which, you know, we talk about the Sooners struggling as far as run blocking. Well, the receivers, I thought, were the best blockers of the night, especially Westbrook. You play receiver for Oklahoma, you better be able to block. And they did a great job of that all night long, especially on that play that was so that was executed so crisply uh, by the Sooner offense. Mixon you know, was able to score, and Westbrook had a terrific downfield block to make that happen. You know, fourth quarter, you know, Trevor Knight played a little bit through an interception in the end zone, but that was only one of two turnovers on the night for the Sooners. I come away from this game thinking the following. I think, you know, the the, the passing game, once they got in a, to a rhythm, uh, there was no turning back. They, they played better. I also thought, too, that the defense did its part as well. And, they, they, you know, the defense, other than giving up one long play, which is a 42-yarder, um, other than that, I, I thought it was a night in which they were just absolutely on their game, and special teams had some good moments too. Um, naturally, the penalties, you got to cut those down, and if you could do that um, as the season progresses, uh, then this team is, is going to be better than what we saw last year. Final overall grades, um, as I'll give a letter grade, offense, defense, special teams, and overall offense, I'm going to go B. Can't forget about the bad start to this game offensively, especially running the ball. But quarters number two and three, that's all Oklahoma needed in order to uh, make their mark in this ballgame. Uh, penalties, of course, we mentioned too. Um, Got to reduce those. Defensively, I'm going to go with an A. Akron, under 230 yards total offense. Solid debut for Mike Stoops' defense to start the 2015 season. And again, the front seven, they did their part as most of Akron's yards came um, on the ground. But again, under 230 for for the game total for Akron, so you can tell it was a long night for that offense. And special teams, I'm going to go with a B plus. Two field goals made by Austin Seibert. He's only two attempts, and again, he punted excessively early on, but terrific average, nearly 50 yards per punt. A um, couple of nice punt returns by Shepard. 
However, a couple of things, though. Uh, penalties negated the effectiveness of those punts, so they got wiped out. And then uh, Shepard later, um, right before half, um, fumbled a punt return, which Akron recovered. That would lead to Akron's only three points of the game. So there was a miscue there. By the way, we saw Joe Mixon um, try to return at least one punt in the second half, but real good coverage there. So you can tell that the Sooners are going to be using more than just one option when it comes to punt returning. Most part, special teams was good. Final overall grade, a B plus, good way to start your season. And again, you get Tennessee coming up in Knoxville. It'll be the largest crowd that Oklahoma has ever um, been a part of. Okay, they've never played in front of as many fans as they will play in front of come Saturday, um, September twelfth. Well over a hundred thousand at Neyland Stadium. There'll be a good representation of OU fans there, but over ninety percent of that stadium is going to be singing Rocky Top. It's going to be. Uh, predominantly orange, and it's going to be a hard environment for the Sooners to try to win, and they're going to be going against a much, much better offense than what they saw Saturday against Akron. By the way, Tennessee, coincidentally, they opened with a uh, Mac opponent as well, Bowling Green. Ended up being 59-30, to 30, but at one point in that game, Bowling Green was only down 12 points at 42-30 late in the third quarter. Then Tennessee pulled away in the fourth. Tennessee had well over 600 yards of total offense, including about 400 yards on the ground. But at the same time, Tennessee has things to work on, too, because they gave up over 550 total yards, most of those through the air. So there'll be one heck of a scene, one hot ticket Saturday in Knoxville. Should be a good game. Initially, this point spread was at three in favor of Tennessee. I'll be curious if that has swayed even just a little bit. Weekly matchup show between OU and Tennessee probably will be released on Tuesday as I'll give a pregame look at the Sooners and Balls and what could very well be a pick -em game from Knoxville. Again, final from Norman as the Sooners. Didn't start off pretty, but second and third quarter was pretty, and they called off the dogs pretty much in the fourth. 41-3, Sooners win over Akron to start 2015. Boomer Sooner.